from News Channel 8, this is the best of Capital Insider. That was the week that was with Morris Jones. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us for this special edition of Capital Insider. I'm your host, Morris Jones. The midterm elections caused a major power change in the Senate. Our political panel breaks down the Democratic strategy, Obama's response, and the immigration issue. Plus, the race to the White House. Will the Republican tide take the presidency in 2016? Our consultants place their bets. And later, the politics of tech policy. Net neutrality is one of the biggest issues of the year, so why wasn't it part of the campaign discussion? Our tech pro weighs in. But first, here's our own special midterm edition of That Was the Week That Was. Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist and host of Behind the Curtain with Jack Berkman. Catch him every Saturday night on the Radio America Network and Sunday afternoons at 2 on WMAL in Metro D.C. Richard Fowler, Democratic strategist and host of the nationally syndicated Richard Fowler Show. Download his podcast at FowlerShow.com. Cheryl and Harley LeBond, Republican strategist and former senior counsel to the U.S. Senate Judiciary Committee. And Erica Canuti, Democratic strategist and senior director at Purple Strategies. Well, the dust has settled. After a long and costly campaign cycle, Republicans take control of the Senate. We are heading to Washington. <laughs> And we are going to make them squeal. <laughs> Referencing her famous TV commercial, going into the 2014 midterms, Democrats faced an uphill battle. Presidential approval was low, and voters were unhappy with the current Congress. But even in states where Dems felt comfortable, they lost. Richard, what happened to your party? Here, I, I, this is the truth, Boris. At the end of the day, I think what happened to Democrats, and I'm a big believer in loyalty, and I think Democrats lost the loyalty vote, and here's how they did it. They ran away from a president, um, and they ran away from the president's record. At the end of the day, whether the president was unpopular or not, some of the policies he passed are absolutely unpopular. People, um, young people being able to stay on their parents' health care insurance, the fact that we've turned the economy the year So around. would you change them? Would you change those policies if, the, if they're unpopular with the people? Well, no, I think the reason why his policies are unpopular, Jack, is because you guys have spent so much time demagoguing them. It has nothing to do with the actual impact of the policy. But if the public doesn't like it, why don't you change it? Isn't this a democracy? Well, right? listen, it's very clear the Republicans don't like Republicans. The public doesn't like Republicans either. I mean, their approval rating is lower than Democratic approval rating. And oh I think either, but, either way. Right. But they oh certainly did not like the policies of this administration. I mean, everyone has seen the exit polls. They think the country is on the wrong track. They're concerned about the economy. You've got graduate students with degrees in science and technology who can't find jobs. You've got women, a grandmother in Oklahoma who's minding her own business going to work. She's beheaded. I mean, there we have a border security problem. Moms and dads are worried about how they're going to put food on the table. They certainly they're worried are about security. They're 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 and they voted that. They 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 that's why. Election in one right. shot. Erica, I Erica, for one thing, we had the war on women. That was a big campaign in Colorado. It didn't work, though, Erica. The, the, the uh, issues have moved on. Well, I think that the, the reality is that um, women's issues are not just reproductive rights. They are the economy. It is minimum wage. It is equal pay. Um, it is health care. Um, in terms of health care, yes, the bill is, is still pr pretty unpopular, but 57 percent of people either support the um, Obamacare and the Affordable Care Act or want it to go further. So in, in terms of changing it, sure, Jack, we'll change it. We'll keep going. Um, there's still a lot of things out there um, that the president has quickly, done that's been Morris. very successful that he didn't talk about. I think the biggest mistake that was made was not necessarily Democrats distancing themselves from the president, but from the last couple of months, the president not talking about his economic successes. All right, well, the day after, after, hold up, Jack, we'll get to you in just a second. The day after the election, President Obama addressed the nation. To everyone who voted, I want you to know that I hear you. To the two-thirds of voters who chose not to participate in the process yesterday, I hear you too. In most cases, you have to read between the lines of a political statement. Jack, is the president insinuating that Republicans only won because voter turnout was low? It's, inter it's a very interesting comment, Morris. I think the, the president almost is kind of dissing uh, those who voted. It's almost like saying, well, not you don't really all, matter. Exactly. You don't really matter. Oh, so not those, true. Those, those who did 
didn't vote. Yet. Not, let me tell you, you know something. That, Here's and you see where Richard you, you, you see where Richard profile. you see where Richard and Erica they really are great national spokesmen for the Democratic <laughs> Party because they reflect Obama's attitude. Right. O Obama no, 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 no wait 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 a second wait Wednesday, a second no, Obama, Jack I won't let you get away with it. The midterm profile of a midterm voter is different than that of a general election presidential voter. That's just a fact that has always been that way. And I think in this is one of those instances where the um, if you look at the profile of the voters this midterm they were very similar to those in 2010. Exactly. Had the but, 2012 but see, voter profile sure. been the people that but let's, let's talk about the tone. Let's talk to do about the tone. It. You be it. I'm not spinning. Those are just numbers. I mean, All right, Sherilyn, what about the tone? The, the tone was quite defiant. I think this was the first time he faced a hostile press. Um, if looks could kill, and then the gentleman from uh, Jim Acosta from CNN basically said, "Well, you know, they ran against your policies. Uh, Listen, you know, you you lost." Sherilyn, and at the end of the day, it was very defiant. At the end and of the question. Day, Sherilyn, here is, this is what, how this is, is the what, president going to govern the remaining no, two the, years? The real and, question is, and are real, we going to be able to get is, anything done? The real question is, is how are Republicans going to govern? And I think that's the question that the well, American people are trying well, to ask themselves. Well, that's the interesting because, well, narrative, Morris. You right. know, when well, Democrats... Wait a second, wait a second Sherilyn. For the past wait, but four you years, cut me off, actually, Richard. Wait a right. second. For the I'll past cut four you years... Wait a minute, Richard. Let's talk about perception. While Dems viewed the midterms as a message to work together, Republicans saw it as a rejection of Obama's policies. As all of you know, President Obama said very clearly that his policies were on the ballot and voters were very clear in return. They want nothing to do with the policies of Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton. Up and down the ballot, these were the president's candidates. These were the Clinton's candidates and they lost. All right, Sherilyn, who's right? Also, was Ryan's Priebus taking a jab at the Clintons? Let me just give you an example here of policies on the table. The Gang of Eight immigration bill, who voted for it? Pryor, Landrieu, um, uh, Rubio. Udall. Where Marco are these Rubio. people now? They lost. They lost. The people who but voted Sherilyn, for these policies I hear the, listen, are if, not coming uh, Sherilyn, back. Just give me a second Again. Here. If you gr I will grant you all those arguments, and even if those arguments are true or not true, here's the thing, Morris, and now the Republicans own the other side of Pennsylvania Avenue, and it's time for them to finally govern. For the past six years, they've been the party of no, but no Richard, way, well, the I don't think so. Thing, Morris, so now is, they're going to have to vote for the The party of no has to start saying yes. Uh, yes. If, you look at, if you look at where the president went on Thursday, the president doubled down. In his mind, he had like a 10 or 11 in blackjack. He doubled down. The president was completely Republicans defiant. Republicans doubled down, Jack. Yeah. Morris, completely yeah. defiant. The Morris, president, yeah. All right, Sherilyn, go ahead. Okay, the narrative. When the Democrats win, the narrative always is, oh, the Republicans have been obstructionist. Yeah, because you have the been. Republicans, what, one bill have you when passed? When the Republicans win, when I'd like to finish, Morris. Never. When the Republicans win, all of a sudden, Sudden, let's work together. Listen, they had the Senate, they have the White House. What was accomplished besides Obamacare? What have they accomplished? We've accomplished now a lot. all of a sudden, the, 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 the narrative you now, now is let's work together. Rate. Well, you, you, know, you can't argue it, it is true. Rowling, do you want me to continue? No, Richard, Sherilyn, I hear you. All the way down the, the economy's doing well. well. You're certainly right. Whatever caused the shift in the Senate, both sides will have to come together to accomplish some big ticket items like immigration. Erica, can they get it done or will gridlock get even worse? Well, immigration, um, the bill that was passed in the Senate was a bipartisan bill. I mean, that was supported by. Marco Rubio that was crafted with another with a number of Republicans at the table. That was a bipartisan bill that was given to the Republican House that the Republican House rejected. So I don't know that having um, Republicans in charge of the Senate is going to suddenly free up legislation if the House still wants to play uh, politics or if the Senate um, now with new leadership can't keep uh, can't keep the presidential candidates they've got in their caucus in line. The reality is that this was a rejection of Washington. We have seen wave after wave, 2006, 2008. 8, 2010, 2012 in a lot of ways, and 2014 now. People are very frustrated with Washington, D.C., and they want to see the parties come together. More than 50% of Americans can't tell you which party's in control of which house, but they can tell you that they don't like the fact that Congress isn't doing anything. And it's going to be incumbent upon the new Republican leadership to really start moving bills and working with the president and finding common ground and moving those bills. We know that common ground exists. More. We know the common ground on immigration common exists. Ground. It's, it's not just 
forward. It's Donald not Brown just Washington. It's a very interesting, Let's it's an interesting phrase, Morris, because you heard the president come out. The first thing he said on Thursday at the press conference was, I'm going to push forward with executive orders on immigration. I'm going to drive this down you your throat. You also the second line that he said, he Jack, where he said, all, any executive order that I pass will be superseded by a bill or movement with the United States Congress. And I think to add to that, what you saw all across this country, but he in knows Arkansas, that can't for happen, example, Richard. He knows as well that can't as happen. in Arkansas, you saw, even though they voted for Tom Cotton, they also voted to, voted to raise the minimum wage. Republicans, a lot of Republican senators, newly elected senators, have to figure out how they can come to Washington and vote with their constituencies. Let's, and that means Sherilyn, let's, minimum step wage. Out, let's step out of Washington for a minute. All right. They also won several legislative chambers across the country. So now at 68 out of 98, you know, state houses now are owned by the Republicans. Let's talk about out in the states what won. What won was school choice. What lost That's not true. was Common Core. Yes, that is true. If you look at in the map, all right, let's what give, won I can give you an example is school there. choice, in the state of Pennsylvania, which says where that parents Corbett are very concerned about defeated, the education of their children, where was and also by what Tim lost Wolf, Tom was Wolf, Common Core. So that's what parents and families schools. are concerned right, about in the United Pennsylvania States. Pennsylvania governor was not re-elected. So there was a big referendum on school uh, on school and there's lots of other Pennsylvania. states in the All country right, where this. Republicans won. What about the Affordable Care Act? Jack, will Republicans offer up measures to repeal the president's signature health care law, knowing that Obama won't sign it? Oh, I think neither McConnell nor Boehner Morris would want to do that because they're afraid, that, you know, once bitten three times shy, they're afraid. Obama's won the spending showdowns. But I think the good news is they're going to be under pressure from a lot of the conservative forces, particularly in the House. I will predict, we maybe make some news, I will predict. Go. Jack's making news again. I'll predict Bain, Boehner and McConnell will stick a repeal provision in an appropriations bill, probably in the Labor H bill, maybe in an omnibus bill. I think they're going to shove it down the president's throat. And I think this time they win the spending showdown. And I think we're going to see a repeal of Obamacare but come February. Here's the problem. Here's the problem with that, Morris. Republicans continue to talk about how we need to repeal, repeal, repeal the Affordable Care Act. But we they do. have not talked about we how do. to replace it. What happens to those? That, what happens to that young girl in Alabama? Alabama who has asthma who can no longer get health insurance. What happens to well, that mother anecdotal. who just had a baby well, that's who's anecdotal. now considered well, now look, They're going to pick their fight with this. The Medical Device Act, taxing things like that, little things like that will get fixed. We're going to continue this in just a second. Let's take a break. Up next, I'll continue with our all-star panel and a look ahead to 2016. We'll be right back. Welcome back. Now that we've dissected the midterm fallout, let's look ahead to 2016. The presidential campaign cycle has officially started and the playing field is already crowded. Now that Republican Mitch McConnell will be the Senate Majority Leader, he'll be responsible for keeping GOP lawmakers in line. But Cheryl Lynn, there's a fly in the ointment, a couple of them. You've already got Ted Cruz, Marco Rubio and Rand Paul toying with the idea of running for president. That's a lot of ambition ambition that could trump their priorities in the Senate. Can McConnell control his chamber? Oh, I think he can. The more the merrier. That's what primaries are all about. Um, you know, we're going to have an exciting 2016 race, but here's the interesting thing to note from this past, uh, this past November is that um, Hillary Clinton, every single solitary candidate that she campaigned for, lost. Jack, one more thing before we move on about uh, Ted Cruz. I think he could hurt the Republicans for 2016, don't you? People want to come back to, to the moderate, even regardless of what you've got, the former NBC executive and other people saying, Ted Cruz is like the, the, the same problem that the far left has with, with the uh, Democratic Party. Well, Cruz, at this point, unless he can do a metamorphosis, I don't think he'd be a strong general election candidate. I do think that this election strengthens his hand in the primary. I think Cruz, Rand Paul, uh, and Rick Santorum, those three in particular, because the party and the country have moved pretty decisively to the right, I think in 2016, this helps conservatives. I think it hurts more as a guy like Jeb Bush. It hurts Chris Christie. The moderates, I think, are, are on the wane now. They're waning because the party is moving pretty decisively to the right. Erica, from the Democratic perspective, what do you think of that list? Um, I think, um, you know, those are the names, obviously, you know, Chris Christie, Marco Rubio, uh, Ted Cruz, and, and Rand Paul, everyone knows. Um, I do think, though, that they are going to uh, cause a problem because um, Mitch McConnell has got a caucus to keep in line. He's got a lot of things he wants to get done. And if he's got people showboating and stepping out of line the way that Ted Cruz did, it was one thing when they were disrupting Senate business when the Democrats were in control. But now the Republicans are in control. They need to look like leaders. And if they look like squabblers instead of leaders, that's not going to help anybody. And I think 
in particular, it's going to actually help those candidates that aren't currently in the Senate. Jack, back to you real quick. Is Jeb Bush the front runner on the GOP bench? I think he was prior to election night. But I think that, as, as I was saying, Morris, I think the, the move to the right is going to hurt Jeb Bush. Now, Jeb Bush I don't is, know that there's a move to the right. He, he's it, trying the to be, Jeb always... Bush is trying to be a conservative. If you look at what he's doing on immigration, he's trying desperately to move himself as quickly to the right as he can because he knows he has to. Sense. I don't think it'll work. I don't know right. that there's been a move to the right, Jack. I'm going to disagree with you on that. The Senate map was always difficult for Democrats, and it's going to be difficult for Republicans the same way in 2016. Well, but that's I mean, true. It, and also, we have the minimum wage passing in Arkansas. Um, potentially uh, Alaska, South Dakota, a lot of these conservative states. So I don't know that people rejected um, progressive policies oh, so much I mean, as, so much as Washington. Eric, I really think this Let's was look a referendum at the Democrats. Washington. All signs point to Hillary Clinton, but Hillary has been on the campaign trail for months. Fame poster John Zogby says it won't be Clinton in 2016, that she's basically oversaturated the market. Hmm. Richard, will Americans be tired of her come election time? Listen, I, I think it's impossible to know right now. We have about two years left to even get close to the first primary ballot casted. Now, with that being said, I think the Clintons are doing what anybody else is doing. They're going back, they're assessing. What this election says to me, and I think what this election says to anybody out there who's working in the field, is that for you to win this election as a progressive or as a Democrat, you have to come up with a clear narrative and a clear vision for the country. So whether it's Hillary Clinton, Martin O'Malley, or any other Democrat for that matter, they're going to have to come up with a clear vision yes. of where they want to take America. Great. Eric, and, and, that's and, and, and that's I must say, win. the war on women narrative, that just fell flat. And if that's all well, Listen, that Hillary Sherilyn, there, this, Clinton they, is bringing no, 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 as her no, no, no. A game. Let's be very, it'll let's be fall very clear. Flat. Let's be very clear, Morris. There isn't a, the, they, they, Republicans like to talk about this war on women, but I would argue that the Republicans are just waging a war on Hillary. As soon as this election was over, on election night, every Republican <laughs> I, I, began I love to Hillary. I'll criticize. Write her. Listen, the Democrats created the war on women. Policies in the game. Erica, if not Hillary, then who? The GOP has plenty of candidates to choose from. Should Democrats put all their eggs in one basket like Hillary? Well, I think we still have to. Oh, go ahead, Erica. Erica. So, okay. Um, no, I mean, I, I think that there's um, that there's a lot of um, potential people out there. Um, I'd like to see other women get in, in the game. My former boss, Senator Klobuchar, is someone that people have talked about. But I think um, we do need to look elsewhere. I mean, as much as the Democrats love Bill Clinton, Bill Clinton wasn't a thing. He was just a <laughs> Arkansas governor until he became a thing. Klobuchar. So we look out. Let's we got to look out of Washington. I think we should look at governors. I think that's a great place to look. Let's make some predictions and make some news, as Jack famously says. Republicans took the Senate in 2014. Do do they have what it takes to win the White House in 2016, or will the left be able to turn back the GOP tide? Cheryl Lynn, let's start with you. Yes, I absolutely think so. I mean, this, I think, election was a great indicator of where Republicans have made gains with outreach. Um, Cory Gardner made gains with Hispanics. Kasich made gains in Ohio with blacks. And, of course, the best example was Greg Abbott, who beat Wendy Davis in the war on women. He won the women's <laughs> vote in Texas. Richard, real quick, your prediction. <laughs> 2016. Listen, I'm, I'm laughing at this Texas comment, but listen, 2016, I think the, Demo the Republicans have 22 seats up, including Illinois, that they're going to have to make. They have so much field that they're going to have to cover that I think not only do Repo Democrats win the White House, but I think we will take back the Senate um, just because the, the, the Republicans have too much field to, to just deal with. And I just don't think that Mitch McConnell and John Boehner are going to get anything done for the American people, which means the American people on Election Day 2016 will repudiate the Republicans like they should have in 2014. I don't 2016, uh, quickly I make largely, some news. I largely uh, agree or don't disagree with Richard. We're on the defense in the Senate. We might lose a couple in the Senate. Uh, Pennsylvania's one. Uh, Illinois is almost certainly one. Probably going to lose those two. Sadly, I just don't think we can win the White House bec because getting to 270, the way the electoral map is now, even with the current conservative tide, unless you have big change, Richard, it's, or excuse me, Morris, it's going to be tough. Erica, last word, final prediction, 2016. 2016, I think the Democrats have it. Um, Republicans have not been able to win a national election. They don't have the policies. They don't have the policy track record. They don't have the, you know, the results. Um, in terms of the Senate, I think it's a bad Senate map for Republicans, the same way it was a bad Senate map for Democrats this year. We're going to see a Democratic Senate. We're going to see a Democrat in the White House. Democratic strategist Erica Canuti and Richard Fowler and Republican strategist Jack Berkman and Sherilyn Harley Laban, the best super panel on TV. Thanks to you all. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks. And straight ahead on Capital Insider's special edition of That Was the Week That Was, the politics of tech policy. Why wasn't net neutrality part of this year's political debate? Our tech pro weighs in next. 
The issue got record numbers of comments to the Federal Communications Commission, but why wasn't net neutrality part of this year's political debate? It's a question I asked Brian Fung, technology reporter at the Washington Post. Well, I think there are really three reasons. One is uh, you're seeing a lot more action at the FCC about this issue than you are in Congress, and that's uh, kind of by design, right? This is a policy that's being developed by uh, an independent agency, and so Congress doesn't really have a whole lot of input other than um, writing letters. Uh, the second reason is that a lot of the organizing that's been happening around net neutrality, these 3.9 million comments, as you said, are coming from uh, people who are submitting uh, feedback over the internet and the internet is by definition a distributed place and so people who are um, submitting comments from California may not live uh, I'm sorry people who are submitting comments from California um, are not in the same place as the people who are submitting comments from say Massachusetts and so the fact that these people are not in one single place suggests that it's very difficult to build a cohesive political uh, movement that will change the outcome of elections That's the latest from Capital Insider. Join us again Monday for the latest news and politics. And on weekends, join me for Government Matters, Sunday mornings at 9.30 on ABC7 and throughout the day on News Channel 8. In the meantime, I'm Morris Jones, and that was The Week That Was.